Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And this year, 2022, well pretty much every year, but especially this year, is I'm working really hard to get you where you want to be in your own primitive archery and primitive hunting adventures. And as you probably already know, we do a lot of build or hunt or how-to videos just like this one. So if it is your first time to the channel, do please consider subscribing. This video is pretty long overdue because I've been asked many times over a lot of questions about primitive quivers. And you know, quivers aren't necessarily a super popular subject, but there are some really important things that you should know about your quivers or my quivers for that matter. But more importantly, how I set my quivers up and why I hunt with a quiver like this. Because there are very specific reasons that I choose to use a side or plain style quiver just like this one as opposed to back quivers or bow quivers or anything along those lines and whatever kind of quiver you want to use is perfectly fine but I love this one and it's taken me years to decide what kind of quivers I really like if you've been following me over the years you'll notice that I've used a lot of different quivers but probably for the last five or so years maybe even up to eight years I have been dead set on a plain style quiver, whether it's made out of a bobcat or an otter or a fox or just plain bison hide leather, it doesn't matter, but this is the style that I pretty much stick with. All right, so let's bring it in close and we'll explain what I got going on here. All right, a couple frequently asked questions are as follows. Number one is, is the bottom line, this has probably got to be the biggest question that I get overall, is the bottom line or how do you keep your points from rattling together and getting dull in the bottom of your quiver? I literally get that question probably more than any other and I'm gonna give you the answer to it right now. Okay, so the number one way that this works is see it's flat. This is all folded over. There's no circle at the bottom. There's nothing like that. Okay, now the reason that I do that is because when these points and arrows are in the quiver, the points are oriented up and down with the quiver, and they slide in, so whenever I slide it in, when I get down to about the last couple inches, I'm just careful when I put it in, and if there's a lot, if I can feel a lot of friction, I don't push. But typically what you can do is you can feel that seat right into the base of the quiver, but because it's folded over and it's sandwiched, it holds all those points in there, and I can run and shake this thing and there's no arrow rattle. What you're hearing rattle is a little bit of fletchings and you're hearing the knife hit right here a little bit. But there's no rattle back here whatsoever. I can literally run and when I run I typically grab it here and I pick it up while I run. Get him. Like this just to keep it from smashing against me more than anything. But there's no rattle to the points whatsoever. Now, the back edge and seam in here is glued and or stitched, depending on the type of the quiver, but it's either glued and or stitched, but either way, you're not gonna put a stone point out the back of this unless you are physically f trying to force this through. And now when it comes to steel points, you have to remember too that the inside of these quivers are lined. They're lined with bison hide. So it's not just the skin. It's completely lined with the bison hide, so it's pretty strong. But like any sort of quiver, if you, even if you use steel points in here, if you just slide them in gently, you're perfectly fine. It's when they start to bind up and you start cramming them in, well you got a knife on the end of your arrow, so of course you're going to cut through. You'll cut through anything that you uh, that you're trying to force that arrow through. So when you start stacking these arrows in, what I do is I don't just take a handful of arrows and stick them in. I take one at a time and then I slide one in and I get it where I want it and then I slide another one in. In a quiver like this, I'm typically hunting with five or six arrows at any given time because for me to run through five arrows in a hunt, that's doing a lot of shooting. I just don't need to bring my whole arsenal of arrows with me every single time that I go out. Now I've carried extra arrows, even you know up to seven or eight, depending on the quiver. But typically, every time you see me running around doing hunts, you're gonna see anywhere from four to six arrows in there. I don't typically leave the house with four, I would say five 
or six or it'd be five and a blunt or four and a blunt or something like that. But either way, five or six arrows is typically plenty. If I'm going on an extended hunt and I know I'm gonna be out there for a long time, I'll go ahead and slide a few extra ones in there. But really we have no issue with arrows rattling around in the quiver and the stone points don't bash against each other and get dull pretty much ever. You just slide them in carefully, pull them out carefully, and you're good to go. And that's really the reason for the fold over. And when people say, well, you know, I like the ones that have a circle that's sewn in the back so they're open. Well, that's when you shake your quiver and then they rattle around a whole bunch. See, and I don't want that. So if you, if you build yours like that or you have one somebody else built like that and you like it, that's fine. But that's one of the reasons that I, I don't like that. And that's one of the reasons that I build mine specifically like this because I can shake it and we ain't gonna rattle any points. All right, next question would be kind of on the fringes, okay? So now I do a couple different types. See, now this is one particular type of quiver that I have. This is one of my personal ones, and then this is one of my personal ones. So I, bo I use both of these. You've seen this one here in the elk hunt previously. You've seen this one in a lot of deer or hog hunting videos. And spot and stocking with the fringe, as you can see, I love the look of the fringe. I really do. I think it brings the look together a lot. I really love it. However, in a true spot and stock situation where I'm really trying to sneak up on something and I'm moving like this, you can see even when I stop, the fringe does move. Okay, so that's the only issue that I have. If I'm in tight cover, now keep in mind when I'm sneaking up on something, I'm not sneaking up on them with the quiver coming to them, typically. Normally my bow's here and I'm walking in this way. So you don't really see a lot of the fringe, but there is a possibility of seeing some here and even a little bit back here wiggling around. So if you plan on doing a phenomenal amount of spot and stock hunting, you might not want to go with the fringe. However, I've killed a lot of animals while spot and stocking with quivers with fringe. So really that's going to be up to you. In the situation of this quiver that obviously doesn't have the fringe, if I'm sneaking up on something, you might get a little bit of movement out of the quiver the only fringe you're really going to have to worry about is this and sometimes I even braid it up or tie it in a knot so it doesn't and honestly we can build them and just not have any fringe on these at all whatsoever the fringe is really nothing more than decorative so I like a quiver that's just like this if I'm planning on doing a lot of spot and stock but honestly I flop back and forth and I've killed lots of animals in both so really it's just kind of up to you okay so now let's look at some of the other things that I have going on with the quiver and why I set them up the way that I do. So obviously beadwork kind of stuff, that's all just decoration. Same thing with like the silver pin or the copper pins that I do. Just stuff that I like to dress it up. One thing I always have is a knife and I always carry a stone knife and you've seen me use a stone knife on many, many occasions and I either you know, keep one for skinning or for finishing off hogs like you've seen me do. I just ran up with my stone knife, ended up breaking the tip off in there, but ran up with my stone knife. That's all I was carrying on me, so. In certain videos before, but always having a stone knife attached to my quiver is a lot more handy than having one attached to my belt. Because if I it, jumping in somewhere, I sit down, I don't want to end up sitting on the knife. If it's with my arrows, I know that I've got it. If I'm going hunting and I don't have my arrows, there's a problem. So I'm not going to forget my knife because I just leave it attached to my quiver all the time and it's in a sheath when I need it it's right here and then I keep this on the back side but you can flip it to the front but then I also have a little extra pouch in this way it's not flopping around while I'm walking but it's always here and if I need it I can swing it to the front and it takes me just a minute to open it and what I keep in here is usually an extra finger tab or an extra bowstring just in case I should ever need one whether you keep a sinew string or a a modern string it doesn't matter but I always keep an extra just because you never know when you're out in the field and you do something silly and maybe you break a string or you cut a string with a knife or who knows what could happen but why on earth would you ever go on a good hunt without an extra string and that's what that little pouch right there is for so likewise same thing here on this quiver I've always got my stone knife set up and I even got a copper pin up on this one I just like the pins I have just kind of an extra fancy thing, but I have my extra string bag here 
this like I said this is an older quiver and that's a brain tan bag so it's a it's a little uh, little rougher looking and I've got a different way to close it the other ones are the ones that I I carry an offer on the website but also within that is I can carry a little antler flaker for fixing my point so if I shoot an arrow and say I break the tip off of her, or if I'm wandering around and accidentally tap it on a tree or I shoot it and I miss or something I need to sharpen the arrow or sharpen the point I can pull out a little antler pressure flaker and I can keep it right in there and sharpen it up and ready, we're ready to go again on that same arrow so this way I don't have to take it back to fix it just pull it out sharpen it up takes two minutes and we're back in business or another option is I've got another little piece that hangs off the back and that's if you don't want to carry a piece of antler I've got a nice little sleeve right here that I can keep one of my micro flakers in for doing the exact same thing just sharpening up the tips or the serrations on my stone hunting point so this way I've always got a little flaker for sharpening whether I want to use indigenous aboriginal style tools you know antler or if I want to carry along a little metal flaker or copper flaker I can do that too and that's easy peasy and it's hanging right on the back of my quiver so it's out of the way it's kind of tucked in behind me so it's not swinging around or anything and honestly I never know it's even there while I'm hunting but the second that I need it it's right here and I can pull everything right to the front to work on it alright guys that's it nice little short video this week on the how to or technical Tuesday and I hope that you gained a little bit of value on seeing how I set up my quivers in different ways and hopefully if you do it the same way hopefully you'll find as much success with it as I do and I know most people love to make their own quivers and we also do have the do-it-yourself quiver building kits which are just the bison hide quivers they're available on huntprimitive.com you can buy the leather and the instructions in the kit and you can build one yourself or you can get on huntprimitive.com and you can order a custom fur quiver or a leather quiver already completed or you can just get one from somewhere else or you can just make one yourself by the seat of your pants there's nothing wrong with that as well a lot of people love to build their own quivers and if you want to do that I think that's phenomenal I always encourage folks to build their own gear but if you need help with it if you just want to get one from us that's perfectly fine too we're here to help so we've got some different quivers for you to look at at huntprimitive.com.